right, the sun is already high in this bluebird sky, and I just now hooked up the boat. Taking an afternoon trip today for a very specific reason. It's now 12 noon and high tide in the area I'm fishing occurred about an hour ago. So I really wanted to fish a falling tide today. We're approaching the end of October and that means shrimp are dumping out of the marshes and speckled trout are meeting them to fill their bellies and get ready for this winter. Now the area I'm going to, I'm going completely blind. Don't have any reports or anything. I'm just gonna go hit some areas and see if I can find some fish. I think I'll probably hit the marsh looking for speckled trout, bass, and reds. But as we get later in the day, I'll switch focus entirely to speckled trout, or at least that's the plan. We'll see what happens when we get out there. All right, I just got on site deep in the marsh, and it's been a very inauspicious start to my trip for three reasons. Number one, when I backed my boat in, started the motor, it barely cranked. So I'm thinking my battery's dying. Smart man would have put it back on the trailer and headed home. I pushed back into the marsh just to press my luck. Very glad I got my Seatow membership, but if nothing else, I know I can always disconnect my trolling motor batteries and at least crank the outboard. Number two, I discovered when I got out here that one of my rods is broken. It's actually one of my favorite rods, my Pro TI, really great rod. Oh, I'm just heartbroken the thing is broken. It obviously just broken transit on the way down here. I need to invest in some rod sleeves. I've been meaning to for a while, now I'm going to. Number three, the tide is still screaming in. It should be falling by now, but it isn't. So I got very different conditions than I expected. Winds howling out of the east, and that's what's keeping this tide from falling. So I got my work cut out for me. Let's see if we can find some fish, and let's see if we can actually get back to the marina. All right, I just checked the nearest buoy, and sure enough, the tide did one of those little fake fall things. It had just a little fall, and then it started rising again. So it is what it is, just gotta deal with it. Got a rising tide. Now I'm starting in this little bayou that, that runs roughly east-west. I'm just going to allow this wind to push me through it. I don't know which way a rising tide moves in this bayou. I don't have any idea. I should be able to figure it out before long. Now my plan fishing bayou is to start. The bayou bite has not been that good lately. But I'm hoping I can run into some trout by fishing bayous. Obviously I'm going to target bass and reds. But maybe I can bump into a few trout as well. Throwing a pro's choice. Senko style soft stick bait under a quarter ounce bullet weight tungsten of course and i'm throwing this because it's what i had on from the last trip this water in here is pretty good it's not phenomenal but it's pretty good definitely good enough to catch fish in particularly trout this is great water for trout fishing and you can see it's got lots of grass in this bayou There's a fish. There's a fish. Nice bass. Nice bass. All right. There we go. <laughs> About my fifth cast or so. He was right on the edge of that grass bed. I should really spot lock us and see if he's got buddies. I think I'm gonna do that. Pretty good fish. And he wrecked my stick bait. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. The back of my boat went right over where I caught that fish. So I'm gonna have to bail on this area. Just keep moving on. The good news with this weather is it's nice and cool. Front came through the day before yesterday. It's really pretty weather. Oh, that's a fish. Oh. That was definitely a fish. All right, here's a good looking bend in this bayou. So I just hit the spot lock, just so I can explore this a little bit and see if I can find any trout. Water should be deeper in this bend. Water's nice and pretty. We've got grass. I just saw a mullet jump over here. So we got everything we need. We're just gonna explore this a little bit. Oh, that's a fish. There's a fish, first cast, is that a trout? Yes, that's a trout, perfect, perfect. Very nice. Come on, big boy, let's get you in the boat. See if you're a keeper, I'm pretty sure you are though. 
Oh yeah, definitely. Nice fish. All right. All right. That's why we stopped. Hey, big guy. Appreciate the fight. All right. Well, that's a good start. Let's see if he's got buddies. He tagged it too. That was a good hit. All right, I'm not sure how deep this little bend is. Based on how long it's taken my death grip jig head to get down to the bottom, I'm saying it's probably about seven or eight feet. There's a fish. There's a fish. Another trout. Nice. He was in a different spot. He was much closer to the boat than the other one. All right, another keeper speckled trout. If he stays in, then he did. It's so common for the trout to get in these bayous in October and November. You can usually sit in a bend like this and catch five, six, seven of them. I don't usually catch 25 in one spot, but there's spots like this all over the marsh. And the great thing is most people don't know about them, so they don't get hit. I'm fishing right now against the current, which is, oh shoot which is really a favorite way for me to fish. You really got to slow down to do it like this, but I catch a lot of fish thrown against that current. I got a 3 8 ounce death grip on, and I'm definitely getting down. It's not a canyon here. Like I said, it's probably seven or eight feet. The great thing about fishing against the current, you get a lot of hits when the bait is just sitting still because that jig head's on the bottom, the tail is trailing it, and that tide is making the tail flap. When you're fishing with the current, you got to move the bait to make that tail flap. All right, I've made about 10 casts. I've caught two fish, had about two other bites, definitely one, possibly two others. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of adjust my angle. Just let the wind and tide push me in a little bit to change my angle. Actually, the most interesting place on here looks to be a little bit out of my casting reach. So I'll probably move to right over here and cast back this way and see if I can find kind of a sweet spot. There's a fish, there's a fish. We changed the angle. Another trout. All right, oh, lost him at the boat. All right, I'm gonna try and prevent myself from getting trout myopia. I'm gonna target bass and reds as well. Ooh, there's a fish, bad hook set. Redfish? I think redfish. Yep, redfish. All right, good keeper red. About a, <laughs> about a 19, 20 inch fish. Boy, did he thump it. Hey, big fatty. Look at that belly. Gluttony was your undoing, big boy. But I appreciate it. All right, time to make a move. We got to see if this motor is going to start. Wish me luck. Ooh, yes. Yes, indeed. We're on the move. All right, the water in this bayou is just, I mean, wow, it is gorgeous. I like our chances in here, even at the end of this high tide. All right, this looks like another potential trout bend. Even though I gotta tell you, this water doesn't look like trout water. It's just too clean. But I gotta try it. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Matrix Shad. And by Bill Lewis. And by Cito New Orleans. And by Versamax Quartz. And by Death Grip Jig Heads. Now I checked the nearby buoy and the tide is completely dead. And I'm seeing evidence of that here. Obviously, we got the wind pushing the water, 
but it's just not motivated at all by the moon. <laughs> it's just kind of lazily moving. So that's going to work against us for a little bit. There's not a lot I like less than a... Oh, there's a fish. Are you a trout? Yes, speckled trout. There we go. All right, keeper trout. Our pattern is holding. I tell you what, this fish is pretty cool. Water temp is 71. It's come down a lot, 10 degrees or so in the past few days. Beautiful trout. Love you, dude. Well, I guess we can forget what I said about this water being too clean for trout. <laughs> now, I really cannot tell which way this tide's moving, if it's moving at all. Everything on the surface is being blown by this wind, and it just doesn't appear that the tide's moving at all. Well, I tell you what, it's a steep drop to the bottom here. Oh, another hit. Fishing across the wind. Big belly in my line. It's never really fun. Definitely deeper right here than the last bend we fished. There's a fish. All right, another trout. He's a baby. He's not gonna make it. Let's see if there's some more here. Let's see if there's some more in this area. All right, so I'll let the wind push us up against this grass. Look how clean that water is. Hopefully you can see that, just incredible. So rather than busting up my prop blade, break out the push pole. Invaluable piece of equipment. It's another bend up ahead as you can see. Gonna hit that for trout as well. They're probably all through this bayou if I had to guess. As I mentioned earlier, it's not the right time of year to just sit in one spot on a rising tide or a dead tide like we have now and catch 25. Falling tide, that can definitely happen. But it appears we're not gonna get that today. But this stick and move bayou pattern is just my favorite this time of year. So productive. So much fun too. Now sensitivity is so important to me. <laughs> you, you might as well call me a Hallmark movie. So that being the case, I fish a medium heavy rod with fast action. Some people feel like it's overkill for trout. I understand why, but I know I detect far more hits because of it. And I also fish 30 pound braid. I think this is actually Daiwa J braid. I like this braid. And right now I got a 20 pound fluoro leader with, as I mentioned, a 3 8 ounce death grip jig head and a shrimp creole colored matrix shad. Now this water is so pretty. I wouldn't throw anything in here other than shrimp creole or holy jolly. Boy, this all looks so bassy. <laughs> it's days like this, I wish I had somebody else on the boat throwing something different, because I know I'm passing up some bass and redfish water. But you can only do one thing at a time, right? Well, the water's definitely moving through this cut. I think it's windblown, but let's throw a worm in there and see what happens. There he is. Broke off. Damn it. Well, when you catch about 50 fish on one liter and don't retie, that's what happens. Dummy. All right, here's another bend. This one looks good. Let's see if it's got some trout. There's a fish. Oh, trout, trout. All right. <laughs> Keeping with the pattern. All right, get in the box, boy. Get in the box. Uh, 
There's a fish. What are you, another trout? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. However, <laughs> you're not quite big enough, buddy. Appreciate the thought, but I'm gonna let you go. Man, this bend is beautiful. There has got to be trout in this bend. I just gotta figure out where they are. Goodness. I wish this tide was moving. Oh, there's one. There's one. Oh, are you a redfish? Are you a bass? Are you a redfish? I'm thinking red. I'm thinking redfish. I know you're not a trout. You're a redfish. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Ooh, there it is. Another red. Oh, beautiful fish. Man, is that pretty. Mm, there he is. Beautiful fish. In all honesty, these are the reds I like to catch. Much more than the 20 plus inches. This fish is 18 inches. Right in the dining wheelhouse. All right, that sun is getting low on the horizon. I think it's almost time for me to call it a day. I think I'm gonna try for a, a bass or two. This last little stretch of this bayou and then head for the house. I'm not even that, in that area now because I just gave up on it. Yeah. So, cool. there's a fish, there's a fish. Oh, what are you, a redfish? Oh, nice bass, nice bass. That's what I was after. All right, there we go. All right, well, I'll see you in a little bit. You heading home? Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. You got it, be careful. All right, Bye. All right, I was hoping to close out the day with a bass, and I did. It's not a trophy, but it'll make the team, and I will take him. All right, the low sun angle is telling me it's time to head back to the dock. Assuming, of course, a motor will start. But I'm really happy with the results of the trip, especially considering the curveball that the conditions threw me. Never got that falling tide, and the winds just stayed up all day. Just terrible winds. Happen so often this time of year, you just got to deal with it. But you've always got options in the marsh of South Louisiana. There's always something biting somewhere. So we were able to put together a really good pattern today. Catching the trifecta, speckled trout, redfish, and largemouth bass. Our marshes are just full of them this time of year. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson. All right, that's bad news. The motor won't start. That means I'm taking out my trolling motor batteries. Have to do a little work here in the marsh. Well, that sucks.